Hello, beautiful people. Hope you're having an absolutely amazing day today. My name is Steve. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I am joined again by my wife, Lindsay. And today we're going to be reacting to the cost of groceries in the UK versus the US. Now, this will be Lindsay's first time exploring anything about this topic. Mm -hmm. She has no idea what kind of differences there are between the prices of groceries in the US versus the prices of groceries in the UK. No, but I'm sure it's going to be a big difference, or at least a noticeable difference. In one way or the other. Yeah. You just don't know which way yet. Yeah. Um, I've, of course, done a couple of videos on this topic, if you've been following me for some time. Um, I did my first reaction to this topic over a year ago at this point, you know, pretty close to the time I started this channel. And then I just did a second video, I don't know, a few months back. Um, but someone actually recommended this particular video because this person actually lives in the US and the UK both part time. I think she spends maybe five or six months out of the year in the US and the other parts of the year in the UK. And so she actually goes to a grocery store in each country that is comparable and actually shops for the same items. So we can actually get a real good look at what the differences are between the prices in the US and the UK. This video was around three months or, or yeah. so ago, so this should still be pretty accurate, yeah, I think. Yeah, fairly, I mean. I don't think here in the US, we've seen much changes in the last three not months. Not in the last three months. Um, there for a while, it was oh changing quite dramatically, goodness. even week to week. Yeah, it was crazy. like every week, it was just boom, but boom, boom, But lately, it's been fairly stable. Yeah, thank God, oh my <laughs> goodness. I'm, I'm so glad for that. I mean, but not that I'd complain if it went down a little, but. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you remember how high the the price of eggs were at one point? You remember? Milk, milk too. Eggs, everything. Was yeah. Just we insane. need to go back to getting our milk and our eggs from from the local farmer because it's it's a much better. Well, it's, it's not as not good really of a deal, cheaper, but it, they're they're better, better quality, quality for what yeah. you get for just a little bit increase. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, guys. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of bring Lindsay on to a, to uh, learning about this topic because. Uh, she knows nothing about it. And I think she'll find it really interesting, the difference yeah. in the prices between groceries in the U.S. and the U.K. So do you have anything you want to say before we get started? No. I'm just <laughs> excited to see the, like how it compares. All right. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and jump in here and uh, check out the cost of groceries in Britain versus America. I've been asked about cost of living differences between the U.S. and the U.K. And one thing that people seem to be interested in is the cost of groceries specifically. So I'm going to tackle that in today's video. I'm here in front of Tesco <laughs> in the wind <laughs> and I'm going to be going in and buying kind of a typical shopping basket full of groceries. And then I will compare the cost of all those items versus what they would cost at Kroger in Dallas, Texas, like any good grocery shop. All right, so this is also the first time you've ever seen the inside of the UK grocery I store. I love, I just love grocery stuff. I don't yeah. know why. I mean, I guess it's because I'm the mom and I make the meals. And <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting for me to see. Right. All mm -hmm. right, I'm excited. I'm ready. All right. This is your <laughs> yeah. first time looking at a British grocery store. See if you notice some differences. Well, first would be the cost. Yeah. Like yeah. in pounds versus. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how much we're going to see of actual Tesco here. Shopper, I'm going to begin my shopping trip in the produce section. Okay, so let's far, go look at the cost somewhere. of strawberries. To our first example, strawberries. Doing all that complicated math, the result was the British strawberries are 6% more expensive than the American. Really? Really? Bananas because the American strawberries are, are one pound one pence per kilo. American bananas are 49 cents a pound. That's pretty cheap. And when cheap, you do the conversion, though. it means those British bananas are 13% more expensive. Really? What? Okay, really? so far. I'm like, surprised. No, when, whenever I've done the two cost comparison videos I've done, the British version, wherever he was shopping, I can't remember, um, it was hands down cheaper. Like we're talking like the whole grocery shop. Where store. was it though? I don't remember. Was it Little or Lidl or? No, I think one was Sainsbury's and I felt like one was Tesco, but I could be wrong on that. 
He didn't Kroger, go, by the way, is not our cheapest store. No, Kroger isn't the cheapest I store. Think Walmart is probably the cheapest for produce. Well, Ruler's pretty cheap, and that's a version of Kroger. It's a version, but it's the discount Kroger. The Peeler mandarins are £2.50 for a 600-gram bag. Back in the States, looking at a similar item, we have a three-pound bag of these mandarin clementine oranges for $4.49, which makes the British ones 53% more really? expensive. At this point, I was kind of freaking out yeah. because I know that I felt like I was spending less money on produce. I've heard. Britain, and the first few I items were all more expensive once I did the conversions. That's but fasten lot, your huh? seatbelts. Things are about to change. Okay, Fresh broccoli is one pound ninety-two per kilo. Buying broccoli by the pound in the states is one seventy-nine for a pound, making the British broccoli forty-one percent cheaper. British wow. carrots, a one good. kilo bag is only fifty p. A two-pound bag of carrots in the states is two dollars and forty-nine cents, which My makes goodness. the British wow. carrots a whopping seventy-eight percent cheaper. This one didn't surprise me at all. Mm, when you buy so bell peppers here. in the U.S., the green ones aren't that expensive. But I always buy red, yellow, or orange, and they're crazy expensive, like $1.49 each one. So yes, the British peppers were 55% cheaper. That's crazy. These oh, one oh, thing. Tomatoes are expensive. Tomatoes are very expensive. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that the mm -hmm. British version of produce, I think you're going to on average, I think you're going to find there's less toxic pesticides sprayed on all your produce. Mm -hmm. I think here Probably because, overall. you know, there's there's more toxic stuff they allow in our food mm -hmm. here in the U.S. in general. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's certain pesticides and herbicides that aren't even allowed in the U.K. that we yeah, probably have to deal thinking, with. Yeah, I was thinking it would be really interesting to see. Because we, buy, we try to buy a lot of organic stuff here, mm -hmm. which is more expensive, obviously. So I'm wondering how that compares in the U.K. But... You know what else is interesting? What? Their tomatoes come from Morocco, which I guess makes sense. That makes because, sense. I mean, for them, that's probably the closest. Not all tomatoes, warmer. obviously. No, they, but, but I'm just saying these. Right. Ours come from Mexico. If, if they're think. coming from outside yeah. the country, they'll probably come from Mexico. Mm -hmm. A lot of our tomatoes grow in greenhouse, though. Like the ones we usually get yeah. are greenhouse, the ones or we Canada buy in. Canada sometimes. Sometimes Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Cherry tomatoes are one pound for a 300 gram packet. To try and keep this an apples to apples equivalent, if you pardon the metaphor, I'm comparing the really fancy cherry tomatoes in Britain with the similarly really fancy cherry tomatoes fancy in tomatoes. the States. And the British ones were 15% cheaper. These okay, how much were the tomatoes we just bought? We bought a I don't remember. Well, we got them at Costco, Costco, which is a major difference yeah. compared to with the regular store. For, for the amount you're getting. Yeah, you for, get like double the amount for... Was it like five bucks or something? It was, I think it was five ninety nine or five fifty or something. I wish I had the receipt up here. Oh, well. Grapes. Grapes can be very specific here. Grapes. 500 grams for one pound 90. I could not find American grapes that were both red and green packed in the same container, mm -hmm. so I just I've went for I've red I've never grapes. seen that. And looking at equivalent products, the British ones were 21% cheaper. This bag of baby potatoes is one pound 20 for one kilo, although it's actually on sale for 79p right now. Again, it was really hard to find an equivalent, but the closest thing I could find in the States for these small potatoes were the discount. store brand Kroger wow. new potatoes at three ninety nine for a one and a half pound bag. But, that but she said, didn't she say it was even cheaper with the sale? Yeah. But she's just, she's just doing regular yeah, price, I guess. To make it fair. Wow. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I guess it's true because you're never going to necessarily have the same things on sale in either store, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. So Wow. Wow made the British ones 75% cheaper. A pot of basil is £1.90. I actually went and looked at the store at the size of the basil plant in Kroger, and it looked a lot smaller than the ones in Tesco. So when I did my equivalent, I multiplied the price of the American basil by one and a half times. British basil, 49% cheaper. Yeah. A lot has been did she, said. Did she just say basil and basil? Yeah, so she's she, going back and forth she, she here. Described, that. She described the American version as basil and the, uh, and the UK version as basil. Yeah. 
Okay, bread. When I've looked at the difference in the cost of bread, there was mm -hmm. a major difference. I want. I'm really? curious to see how this is going to go with her uh, difference here. One thing I've noticed is that wow. seeded breads are really popular here. They way here more too. popular than they are in the states, and they are delicious them. and nutritious. This is Ian and my favorite new bread. It's Tesco Finest brand, and it's whole meal seeds and grains, and it's 135 per loaf which is 800 grams. Wow. The bread aisle is so different in the U.S. Yeah. than it is in the U.K. Mark. Yeah, like when I've seen the bread out in, in the U.K. <laughs> store, the little bit I've seen, I haven't really seen a ton, but what it looked like, you can see what we just saw mm -hmm. there. It looks like there's more of the, the real whole bread. Mm -hmm. Here you get a bunch of this really soft, overprocessed over processed stuff. Now, that's not to say... But when we're getting... Sorry. When we're getting... Like, she said seeded bread is more popular there in the UK, but if you look at the organic brands, it's so hard to find just a regular loaf of bread anymore. They're yes. all seeds and, like... Seed oils. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, they might, <laughs> too. I don't know. Bread, but... but uh yeah, it's, it's... You can get some decent bread. It's not like you can't get some decent bread, yeah. but it's it's much harder. It's You don't have as many choices on that because <laughs> everybody eats all this junky wonder bread and stuff it's just mm, yeah anyway most of the bread in the bread section is this kind of sandwich bread which is not very healthy or very good and it's full of preservatives and the honey wheat really is not whole grain in order to get bread that is yeah. more healthy you need to shop in this section <laughs> <laughs> where things actually have whole grains. Completely different section. It's hard to find mm -hmm. something that's equivalent to what we buy in the UK because the store brand, private selection is the Kroger store brand. The store brand has whole wheat, but they don't have anything with seeds. And then this is a really popular brand. It has whole grains, but, oh, actually this is new. They do have a whole grain with seeds. So this might be the closest to what we buy in England and it's $4.99 for a loaf. This is a biggie. I did actually mm. buy that Pepperidge Farm whole grain with seeds bread and it's pretty good. The slices are huge, but it's pretty good bread. Not as good as the Tesco bread though. And that Tesco bread, 72% cheaper. With our bread, we need some butter. So here we have did you see how cheap Kerrygold is there? When we buy the single block of Kerrygold, it's like $5. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah, it is. How much was it there? $260? Two sixty. dollars Wow. Some Tesco brand regular salted butter, and it's $179 for 250 grams. American butter is also pretty expensive, so but store brand you, butter, comparing American and British, the British butter gold, was 6% mm -hmm. cheaper. Big difference. Our go for favorite the kind of jam, wherever we are in the world, is bon maman. Here is the raspberry conserve. Normally, it's £3.30 for three... By the way, guys, we get, we, we get this here, and we buy this. So uh, we're, if you eat this, we're it actually eating the same thing. It is so type. expensive at Walmart, though. Like, for the little jar, mm -hmm. like, she just held up is well I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say close to seven dollars at walmart which is the cheaper place to buy it and we just bought like a bigger jar that's like two and a half times that size yeah at costco, costco. For 10. yeah costco is a much better deal for something yeah. like that 70 grams but it's actually on sale for only 260 now i was not surprised to see mm -hmm. that yeah. with the american jam being about wow. six and a half bucks for a jar the british jam was 39 percent cheaper Although I have to confess, when we first got to England this summer, this exact jam was on sale for two pounds a jar, and I stocked up a ton. Don't I forgot to film honey in England, but I really wanted to show this comparison 60%. because it's a big deal. We love honey, wow. and it's crazy expensive in the States. This comparison shows both of these little plastic bottles are 340 grams, a pound and a half in Britain, and four and a half bucks in the States. Make we, right. we just so yeah go ahead well we i was saying we just i also bought some honey yesterday at costco and it was uh we got we got a big thing i don't remember how much it is mm -hmm. that's only 12 ounces right but here's the thing this is what i was gonna say the honey she's showing the kroger brand clover honey i don't know if it's 100 percent honey because there's been there's been a lot of investigating into the honey at least in the u.s 
And a lot of it is mixed with other things Some to cheapen stuff it. Stuff from China. So we really try to buy like more local type honey, mm -hmm. uh, raw, unfiltered, which is way more expensive. Yeah. But at least you're getting the full stuff. Legit product. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I don't know if you guys have that issue. Yeah, the there's been, it's been a huge issue here. So uh, there's been a huge investigations going on about yeah, that. Yeah, I think there's even like Netflix docuseries there is. about there's it. There is. Netflix docuseries about it. Called, yeah, it's interesting. It's been a while since I saw that. Making the British honey 60% cheaper. These store brand free range eggs, mm -hmm. medium size, are £1.50 for six. I'm going to show you now why it's hard to compare eggs. Mm -hmm. I want to say this real quick. Sorry for pausing so much, but um, it is not easy to get true quality free range eggs at your like just your average grocery store here in the U.S. And if you do, you're going to pay like, yeah. a ridiculous amount of money. Right. And, and, and the question is always, can you even trust it? Right. You know, is it really free range? Well, it comes down to the words being used yeah. on the packaging. And it, you've got to be really careful because um, I, what is what is it like? What's the legit pasture raised? Yeah. I think now that is the standard if you want the best type of eggs. Yeah. But like they'll, they'll, they'll trick you and say, oh, they're free cage, range. cage free or free range. And even. cage free literally means they're, they're, the, inside people, the inside the building, out of their cage. In the dark. Yeah. <laughs> they're out of their cage. Uh, it does not mean that they're actually out pecking on the ground. But like, even free range here right. now just means they have like a little opening. They have a little in opening the where that, they can access like a tiny. They can see the sun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, pasture raised. I think that is is what you want get to if farm. you want those really nice yeah. your, orange yolks. Uh, better yet, just go to a local farmer if you have one nearby. So, But in the UK, you guys, from what I understand, I did an egg video. You don't really have that problem. You can go to the grocery store. Yeah. You can like easily at your just Tesco or just a regular grocery store. They can literally just get good quality eggs. And they don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. And it should be like that here. But unfortunately, we do not have that ability for some reason to have it that simple. Between countries, obviously, our eggs are kept in the refrigerated section here, and we oh, yeah, that's have another these yeah. cage-free eggs that are store brand. We don't have them in six packs like they do in England, so I'll just equivalize for the fact that they're sold in dozens. But one thing is, it says cage-free. It does not say free range. Mm -hmm. They have other eggs that are called free range. Those are what you want if you're looking free range. Regular well, store brand you want eggs that don't. Yeah. Yeah, say anything about free range or cage free, which means they're kept in Factory cages. And that's gross. So the American eggs come in a dozen, but the British ones were 10% more expensive. Let's compare prices on. But in my opinion, that wasn't the comparable product. Yeah, it's true. If she if she wanted to compare, because I think in the UK it probably means they're something out. different. They're living their lives out on the belt of pastures. So I think if she right. wanted to truly compare the quality you to quality, to go she would have had to go with pasture raised. The highest quality yeah. probably probably cost you about six dollars a dozen or so, seven dollars mm, a dozen at least. Yeah. So. So that's that's that might not be as accurate. Not sure. Yeah. Not sure. Different kinds of cheese. Here is an extra mature or sharp cheddar and this is for your 400 category. grams <laughs> that is three pounds the kroger brand cheddar cheese oh. is 249 that's not the same thing that is not that's not cheddar cheese yes that orange yeah mm. that's that's the, gross the cheddar cheese she gets the cheddar cheese is, that is called uh cabot farms which isn't the best cheddar cheese you can buy but here at least it's not orange and it's like legit cheese right. so i think something like that would have been more comparable right right um i don't know if they had it though who knows it, yeah i'm not saying they did or didn't they might not but have i'm it just there. saying that's not really might be the best the same you, product yeah nine for eight ounces it's the orangey kind of oh. wisconsin style cheddar that makes the british cheese 17 percent cheaper Although, knowing what both of these cheeses are like, I would say the British cheese tastes better. Then let's also look at the double Gloucester. Wow. That is two pounds 85 for 200 grams. I'm looking to see what English cheeses they have. They used to have double Gloucester, but it looks like they don't anymore. But there is a Cotswold cheese and some 
aged cheddars and Winsleydale, of course. Do and you, still, you don't see this. I was disappointed that I couldn't do a comparison of Double Gloucester do because they. Do you? Do you see the refrigerated bunches of cheese? Well, we don't have a legit Kroger. Right, here. but even at, at like, hey Walmart, do you see? Do you have like that? It's usually just on like. No, but if you go to like the fancier, that's what I'm saying. Like Whole Foods, right? Or the, Weaver that's Street. my point. They could go to Tesco, mm -hmm. which is a regular yeah. grocery store over there. We have to go to a specialty specialty grocery store, store yeah. to actually find uh, those big selections. Granted, I'm not a cheese person. She likes cheese a lot. I, I, I just not so. That's not really my thing. But I can see the difference there. Even though I don't like, if I if I wanted cheese, I can tell it's going to be easier wow. to get good quality cheese in the Look UK at the versus difference, US. 55%. I know. I bet it's better too. Probably better quality. Yeah. yeah. They no longer sell it at Kroger, but this just shows you how expensive the imported British cheeses are. Oh. Wensleydale with cranberries wow. is fifty five percent cheaper by weight in Britain than it is in the states. So that's imported here. Something mm -hmm. I love to buy is fresh mozzarella. So here we have the Galbani brand, which is for a hundred and twenty five gram ball of fresh mozzarella, it's two pounds, and it comes packed in water. I'd have to get There's used to the grams because I'm not used to weighing stuff in that. Brand, which no 210 way. grams, only 69 what? pence, which is crazy. Wait, all these This fresh much? mozzarella is 80% cheaper wow. than the equivalent American store brand. That's and of course, insane. we need to talk about milk. So I'm going to look here at this. Look how much yellower their milk is. Oh, was. I know. That reminds me of like raw milk. Raw yeah. milk we got, or even the Ren Lu. The really like lightly processed, like, the very like, low pasture. Right. What you get in the normal grocery store here. Uh, ultra pasteurized. Ultra pasteurized is. I mean, their their milk is pasteurized too, probably. But, I know, but this uh, but, ours doesn't look like. But that. it's. I don't know if their milk is always homogenized or not. That'd be an interesting video to do. I haven't looked at the milk too much. Um, Semi skimmed. I'm trying to read it. I can't tell if it says homogenized or not. But I'm sure. Well, who knows? But I can tell you, our gallons of milk that we have in the store look pure white. <laughs> Like like white as snow. Yeah, and that looks creamy yellowish. Which I mean, we can get milk like that from a local farm, and <laughs> and back where I'm from, you actually could go to a it was kind of a specialty store, I guess mm -hmm. you say, and you could get good quality milk there. We do when we go to the grocery store here, we we try to buy the grass fed. Uh, yeah, but it's a larger grass-fed company instead of a, you know. And it's super expensive. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I prefer to get it from the farm. We got to start doing that again soon. Semi-skimmed milk, which we call 2% or low-fat in the States. And that semi-skimmed milk is one pound forty-five for four pints or 2.3 liters. Because we have the whole crazy thing going on between the U.S. and the U.K. Hold on. You, like, you can see them. Is this the, is this a white jug or is that the milk itself? I think the Kroger jugs might be solid okay. white colored. I started to say, because I can see yeah. it there, but, but I tell you what, <laughs> this right here is no comparison to this, I guarantee you. I can tell already by looking at the mm -hmm. tenth of the milk. Yeah. It is, it is actually good quality milk right off the shelf of Tesco. This is not good quality milk. This right here is going to be the the Kafo cows that are kept in their pens and they don't get, you know, that's what you're going to find there. Don't get fresh grass. They're right. just nothing but grains and it's just uh, not good quality. So quality wise, I don't think this is a comparison, mm -mm. Uh, you know, but it, again, she this is probably not. This is probably not anything special for Tesco. This is their Tesco brand. This is the Kroger brand. So it is the store brands. Mm -hmm. So it, it all comes rich. down to regulations and it really does. It really does. Standards. Okay, where pints are not the same number of ounces and gallons are hopelessly confusing. I decided to do this all metric. So here are the prices for British and American milk shown in liters. And the UK milk is 18% cheaper. Here's a nice boneless salmon side or fillet or filet. Uh, that is 18 pounds 50 per kilo. I wonder if that's wild caught or if it's farmed. I don't know. It didn't it's say wild Tesco caught. Tesco boneless salmon side. Let us know in the comments, guys. If it's wild caught salmon, 
do you does that does it is it required to put that on the packaging here it's required to put that on packaging if it's wild caught or farmed uh, obviously you would prefer to get wild caught if uh, you have access to that yeah salmon is expensive in both places in the states it's about 15 dollars a pound and that makes the british salmon about a third less expensive that adds these up these chicken fillets these chicken breasts which appear to be free-range chicken cost seven pounds fifty Good luck or finding that 650 here. grams i tried to find an american chicken which would also be free range so that it was an equivalent comparison and it did seem that the british chicken was about three percent more expensive not very much mm. of a difference a british beef fillet steak is eight pounds for 210 grams i was expecting the british beef to be more expensive mm -hmm. but for filet mignon, it was actually 44% less expensive. Wow. The sirloin steak is four pounds 60 for 227 grams. That's Eight very ounces. specific. When I compared the wow. organic grass-fed sirloin steak, it also was more expensive than it. Hold on, 9.49 for eight ounces. So we're talking about about $19 for a pound uh, of a sirloin steak. Now we we buy our yeah. We're blessed to have a good, really, really good yeah. local farm that they do grass fed, grass finished. Yeah, really good quality. Yeah, um, we get that delivered to our house whenever we order it, and it's really cool. We uh, but I think the sirloins we get them for about is it twelve dollars? I think twelve dollars or maybe ten dollars well, per pound. Well, if you do like an eighth of a cow or a quarter of a yeah, cow, it's cheaper. But yeah, but I'm talking about just straight up yeah. buying it. I think it's ten or twelve dollars per pound for sirloin, so we get it very cheap from a local farm. But if you were to go to the grocery store, I haven't bought beef there in forever because we always go to the local farm to do so. Uh, but I think it would be more expensive yeah. than that. Uh, so the fact you can go and get quality mm -hmm. stuff like this at your a regular grocery store is something that is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I wish we had access to that. When we lived back in North Carolina, we had more. It was a little easier. A little easier because we had a lot more options when it comes to stores. We had things like Whole Foods and uh, other other more high end stores that you could get quality mm -hmm. foods that we don't have as much here where we're at. We can still get decent stuff from farms and stuff, but it's just it takes a little more work. It's a more hassle. Yeah, you got to shop it's around. Just, and... Yeah, it is in Britain. Britain was forty one percent cheaper. Minced beef that is only five percent. That's ground beef. Oh, we call it minced. Three pounds forty nine for five hundred grams. I couldn't compare the exact same wow. kind of minced beef to ground beef because the mince was 5% fat. And in the States, it's 7% fat, but this was as close as I could get. And it's 45% wow. cheaper in Britain. A whole leg of lamb is 13 pounds per kilo. Never okay, had lamb. this is funny. I could not find leg of lamb at Kroger. Thank you. I was wondering if she was going to be able to find it because I never see it yeah, in the store. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen lamb in a regular grocery store. I I think I've seen it in like, like, sure like Whole, Foods Whole Foods or something, or something like that. You get a little, but I don't think you get a whole leg. Right. I have no idea. I've never eaten lamb before. Don't know what it tastes like. Know nothing about it. Uh, but I think they grow a lot of lamb in the UK. You know, it, they're smaller. Uh, and so my guess is that is a better use of space. Right. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm thinking you can grow this faster. I, I don't know anything about it, but I'm just considering their size. I, th I would think so. Um, here, obviously, beef is king of the meats. Yeah. And every beef, and cow, chicken. And chicken, obviously. Chicken and cow are like everywhere. <laughs> When I searched on leg of lamb in the Kroger website, all that came up was a Lego <laughs> Lamborghini race car set. So we're not gonna be able to do that comparison. I decided instead to just look at lamb chops and not surprisingly, they were a lot less expensive in Britain. But they even have lamb chops? 52%. Now let's talk about ice cream. Oreo ice cream is three pounds 50 for 480 milliliters. I was not surprised that the British Oreo ice cream was a lot more expensive, 90% wow. higher. And good old Ben and Jerry's, oh, that's, that's an American ridiculous. product, is five pounds so 15 here, even for here. a 465 oh, milliliter carton. I was surprised that Ben and Jerry's ice cream, another American brand, 
was actually less expensive in Britain, 6% lower. That's crazy. Let's do some toiletries. Colgate toothbrushes in the 360-degree style are £2.50, normally £5. I thought both of these Colgate toothbrushes were really expensive. The UK was 10% higher. Comparing the same brand of sensitive toothpaste, Sensodyne Rapid Relief, British one was 11% more expensive. But the Tesco store brand Complete Sensitive Toothpaste is only wow. one pound. And they don't bother with all that extra packaging. This was the only similar item I could find at Kroger, the Kroger store brand that compares to Sensodyne, and it was four twenty nine for a tube of toothpaste. That what? Uh, four twenty nine versus a dollar wow. a pound. Wow. Oh. Uh, the one thing I wanted, I'm curious about. This is something I've never looked into either. I wonder what fluoride is like over there. If they add fluoride to the water, I if think they so. if they put fluoride in the toothpaste and stuff like that, like they do here, I'm sure. I, I I don't know. I'd love to know that. Let us know in the comments, guys. Is fluoride in your toothpaste and your water and all that? Now let's look at the total cost of the two mm. shopping baskets. In Britain, it was 122 pounds, and in the U.S., it was $212. After equivalizing, it was 32% cheaper to shop in Britain versus America. That's pretty wow, dramatic. Wow, guys, that, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> I mean, I expected it to be cheaper for the most part, so yeah, that part doesn't surprise uh, me. I, I already knew that it was on average cheaper, so when this started and I started seeing what? This stuff is cheaper here? Those few items? I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But then she got on into it. It's like, put that in perspective. A third cheaper. What that means for your grocery bill over the cost of a yeah. year. Obviously, things are going to change. Inflation is going to go up, blah, blah, blah. But like, mm -hmm. if that difference stayed true for a long period of time, you literally could see yourself saving tens of thousands of dollars over a decade. Tens of thousands of dollars. And yeah. what you could do with that extra, those extra funds, or who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so what would you think? It was really interesting. I, I enjoy these kinds of comparisons yeah, me too. and learning about how things are different and similar between our two parts of the world. And yeah, I like it. I'd like to see more stuff like this. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I'd love to do more comparisons in uh, housing prices. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously, we need to look at the NHS together. Yeah, um, I've, I've looked at the NHS a little bit. I still have a long way to go to really understand the ins and outs of it with some things. But I got an idea about it. You have no idea about it. So mm -hmm. that's something we're going to have to do soon. I'd also like to see, you know, uh, compare all kinds of things. Like, what's it like when someone goes to a hospital or a doctor over there or um, you know, just, yeah, there's tons of different things that I would like to look at the difference in that I haven't actually touched on yet. Um, so guys, feel free to leave that stuff in the comment things that you think we might like looking into that we could kind of compare to what we right, that experience here, the differences. Okay. Yeah. Showcase the differences, maybe what it's like to, like I said, uh, I'd love to find a good video to show what it's like to go to a hospital in the UK or a doctor's mm -hmm. office and see like what it kind of looks like and what happens and um, or you know what the differences in car prices are or who knows yeah, just tons of different things that I'd like to look in and explore in that regard um, but I wonder if there's like an overall cost of living comparison I'm sure it's been done. I, I don't know how to find that but maybe, maybe someone in the comments can uh, point us in the right direction about something like that. Um, love to explore that topic as well. Um, but do you have anything you want to add? No. All right, guys. I think that's it for us today. This was really cool. Really enjoyed looking at this difference here. Um, overall, I can say for me, I think this is the third video over the last year and a half or so that I've done on this topic. Um, and it is beyond the shadow of doubt, the UK as a whole is going to be cheaper for food. Obviously, in both countries, you can find certain things that are going to be more expensive or less expensive. Or in the U.S., you can find things that are going to be cheaper here than in the U.K. But as a whole, the right. U.K. tends to be much cheaper. I mean, and you know, overall, the quality is just going to be better. Right. So for the price. So, so if we have to go, like even some of the things she didn't even take into account that like to get the quality milk that you guys get directly off the shelf 
it's going to be the next level up mm -hmm. from what she or bought the here. Or the cheese. So if we're going quality wise, it's not going to be thirty two percent. It's probably going to be fifty percent. Mm -hmm. Uh, it literally probably would. Much more dramatic of a difference. I mean, crazy, yeah. crazy difference. But yeah, guys, anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover our British and Irish ancestry. Till next time, guys. Peace. Bye.